On all of these models, you will, notice, you will have noticed that I've plotted an equator and also, by inference, the poles. Uh, this pole data comes from, there's a, there's a, a global, international global uh, a database of, um, of uh, ancient pole data. Now this, uh, the magnetic, ancient magnetic poles are, without going into too much depth, um, all volcanic rocks contain minute um, iron minerals, the magnetites and the hematites crystals. And when they solidify, that magnetite in particular will have a polarity. That will uh, have a north-south pole and would be lined up with the ancient pole. So if you then come along and make, take measurements on, these, uh, on this remnant magnetism, you can then get an indication of where the ancient pole was. And when you plot all of this information on my models, you get a diametrically opposed north and south cluster, polar cluster, on each and every single model. And from there, it is just simply a, a, a very simple process of scaling through 90 degrees to determine the, the equator. Um, this is the North Pole. It, it should, by right, sequence through uh, to the present day. Uh, that is actually located in um, Mongolia and North China. Um, you have that's uh, Antarctica, um, Greenland, North America. Australia's in here, I think, from memory, in here. Um, uh, bearing in mind that Australia was north-south at that time, so it's it's nipping into the to the northern hemisphere. When you're seeking through time, that pole, the actual pole, stays in the same place throughout Earth history. That's one thing that came out of this research. The actual pole, both poles stayed in the same place. It's the actual continents that move around. As the oceans open up and the radius changes, you get in this apparent migration of the continents, an apparent migration of the pole. So the North Pole commenced here, was, was in uh, Mongolia, North China, uh, for 95% of Earth history, and briefly migrated into um, um, North America and then back into the uh, Arctic Ocean where it is at the present. Again, this is the uh, ancient South Pole and uh, that, what you can see on the screen, is Africa. So this is Africa. Uh, or, again, orientated sideways. This is South America tucked in. Um, the Atlantic Ocean will eventually open up uh, at that join. Uh, this is India, Madagascar, and Antarctica, um, and remnants of Europe up here. So the South Pole was located in Central West Africa throughout 95% of Earth history. As the continents started to break up and the new oceans formed, that apparent polar wander was down through uh, along the west coast of Africa to South Africa, and then um, during the Mesozoic, which is the era of the dinosaurs, it then migrated across the opening Atlantic Ocean onto, the, onto Antarctica. Antarctica, bearing in mind, <coughs> started off in the equatorial regions and it migrated underneath the pole, underneath the, the South Pole. And uh, at that time, there was a change in climate. So uh, as the pole, this, this would have had a quite a large um, polar ice cap and as that uh, as it migrated south and the Atlantic Ocean opened up this ice cap was disrupted as that uh, the pole then migrated across the Atlantic Ocean it became uh, seasonal with the ocean warm ocean currents that would have melted that uh, ice cap and became seasonal hence the change in climate and once Antarctica started um, encroaching on the on the uh, uh, south polar region, you started to get fixed permanent ice sheets developing on Antarctica for the first time. Antarctica has then subsequently continued to, mi uh, to migrate through the south pole, so we have uh, the south polar ice sheet concentrically uh, uh, contained within that continent. The change of climates, this um, media uh, announcements that uh, the uh, South Polar ice cap is melting, and, and we're getting it. We're going to entering into a, a change of climate. Um, I tend to take, no, I don't take much notice of that because uh, when you consider that Antarctica is migrating 
underneath the, the polar ice cap, what happens is that that, that ice cap is, or the, the, the continent is trying to drag that ice cap along with it. So what will happen on the leading edge that will break up and fragment and melt, just exactly what they're showing us on, on, on television. But the other side, which we're not shown, will then refreeze and reform. So the, so the ice sheet stays relatively the same size, but it's trying, to, trying not to be shunted sideways with this continent moving underneath it. And similarly, when it, it's, as it migrated out of Africa, the exact same thing was happening. And when you plot climatic data and, and distribution of species on there, the same things are happening. And these species are trying to move around, getting, getting away from these changing and evolving uh, climatic zones. Again, what I would have liked to have shown here is the uh, progression of each of these ancient continental seas, the blue outline shown there as the coast the coastlines and as you change the uh, the radius of the earth and, and, and change the uh, configuration of this uh, crust and also the quantity of uh, um, ocean waters you get a variation in the coastal outlines and this over the period of time, you then uh, progressively evolve from the Rodinia to Gondwana to Pangaean supercontinents and all their subcontinents. And this, again, this coastal information was plotted uh, from published information, published readily available uh, global data. Uh, there was no manipulation of the data, and it coincided precisely with the distribution of the sedimentary basins, as you'd expect. Uh, the sedimentary, the sedimentary basins, because material is being flushed into these shallow seas. Moving forward in time, as this crust extends, and then finally ruptures and starts to, uh, um, to break up to form the modern oceans, you then see in the data uh, a reduction in the area of these continental seas, which implies a draining of these seas into the modern oceans. The formation of the modern oceans then, uh, you then start getting the, the mid-ocean rift zones opening up. And with the mid-ocean rift zones and the new volcanics, you're getting all this new water being, being expelled and as well as the gases and well. So you're again getting a flooding and a filling up of this modern ocean basins. It's quite dramatic when you see it properly. Uh, 